Hey guys, and welcome back to... Whoa. Okay. That was weird. But anyway, <laughs> welcome back to Lost Girl's Ti uh, Diary, and today the story is going to be Forest Light. There is an abandoned pioneer camp deep in the nearby forest, fenced with a barbed wire rotten by time. It used to be the biggest camp in the area until a mind-bending thing had happened there, so the people fenced the camp with a couple lines of the wire and forgot about it. Forgot about, forgot about the camp forever. <laughs> However, I found a camp leader's diary in our library. I wonder why I was the first one who found it. I shouldn't tell what is written in it, but I can't resist telling you. It's gonna make me insane if I don't. Hands off. But this one is so spooky. Then why don't you give Steopa a hug? He is already getting it. Come to us, Stas. I can hug the both of you. Sure thing. I mean, no. I feel fine here. <laughs> Sit yourself. The diary belonged to Oksana, the leader of the first troop. The record says everything was alright for the first half of the camp. Children were having a good time, falling in love and breaking apart. Oksana herself had fallen in love with the camp leader of the third squad, but the feelings weren't mutual. Half the diary is full of poems about her one-way love and sketches of the one she was into. But it changes in the second half. Just listen. Olya takes out a book with a rabbit sticker and draws flowers on it. And drawn flowers on it, excuse me. The 20th of July, the terrible heat continues. Benson asked me to take his squad to the lake before I take mine, and I couldn't refuse. Well, since he asked so nicely. Man, is he handsome when he smiles. My squad wasn't happy, though, but I let them go off an hour past curfew. The 21st of July. We have a situation. Dasha stars... Star... Seva has been missing since the morning. Her stuff is in place, and Katya told me she saw Dasha last night going to the bathroom. We found Dasha. She fell into the old well behind the warehouse. To my surprise, she was safe and sound when we took her out. A lucky girl. On the other hand, she hasn't said a word ever since. I hope she'll be fine. She must rest in the infirmary. Irida Pavlovna called Dasha's parents a lot, but no one answered. During the lineup, Anton lectured me on how to look for the children. I was about to burst into tears. Why is he being so rude to me? The 22nd of July, Petrovich and the guys from the 5th squad built a huge cover for the well. Now is finally safe. Dasha is not speaking yet. She's just lying in her bed, silent. Maria Padovna spoon feeds her. Irida Pavlovna lets no one out of the camp, including Anton, whose grandmother passed away yesterday. The 23rd of July. We are going to see Dasha today. We made a wonderful bouquet for her and a card with our best wishes on it. Something's wrong with Anton. He had a quarrel with the principal this morning. The rest of it was written with a different hand. All of a sudden, I felt like I was out of my body, watching myself from a different viewpoint. I hear a blunt slam after he pushed me right into the well. It doesn't hurt though. But I feel sad. A green bright spot in the sky reflects in the puddle on the bottom, and I see it coming. A shooting star, I think. I should make a wish. 
The spot shines even brighter, the green sparkles closing in on me with the speed of sound. It stings me and casts me back into my body. Now it's the two of us in the body, me and the star. The pain is back, and my neighbor doesn't like it. The little green sparkle starts beating the way my heart does. It is growing inside my body, filling every single cell as if it was an empty vase. The vase is all cracked, however. The green light is getting loose through it. The star bangs in anger and the rips on my body fade away like snow under the sunshine. I feel good, so I curl into a ball right in the humid, stinky hole. Too bad I can't see my companion. I can only feel it burning in my chest. The star wants me to get out of the pit, but I don't care. The only thing I want is oblivion. The star is not going to give in. It's thrashing around inside and I pity it. It warmed me at first, but just a moment ago, it moved up to my shoulder out of the sunken part of my body. Poor thing, how unlucky it got. I can't stand. I see a small shard of sky above me. Now it's being blocked by some vigor. And now it's not. This flickering annoys me, so I close my eyes. I feel someone taking me up, awakening old memories I am hiding from. All of, all of this happened to someone but me, while I was just being a spectator. The show is about to end, and I... Now it's a fireball, instead of the tiny star, growing bigger inside me. It is not a friendly companion any longer, but a gruesome warden watching over me. He forces me to eat, causing pain in the stomach. He forces me to go to the bathroom, stinging my feet. The rest of the time it lets me rest obliviously. The fireball is not growing bigger anymore. Now it is training my body to follow its commands instead. And I do as he commands willingly, otherwise the fire will burn me out. All I need right now is a little bit of rest. Right now the fire bends down my neck, a nurse comes in. She drops her tray with plates on it, so porridge and blueberries scatter all over the floor. The fire flashes up as I see a beam of green light striking Maria Padapovna. The nurse comes out while the beam is tracing her. I look at the flies gathering around the porridge as long as my companion is playing with his new toy. The entire council enters my ward. The camp leader, along with a girl from my squad, carefully go around the mess, whispering. I see both Oksana's pitiful face and the fear seizing the others. They look at me as if I am an exponent of Kun's Chimera. Their words are full of false sympathy. Their presence disgusts me. The keen rays of green pierce into their heads, swift and silent. Then they go out of the room, kicking the scattered plates and trampling the blueberries. The flies are back again for their feast. Dong! One of the rays scattered around with a melodic jingle. Right away, the peacefully dreaming fireball is woken up. He throws me off the bed. I got out of the infirmary, unable to resist its pressure. But I don't want to. Dozens and hundreds of rays are following me along the way, right to the targets only they can know as I follow the way my star shows me. We slowly make our way around the camp while the green rays fill the air with their shine. Ding, 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 dong. All of a sudden, the rays are breaking apart. 
which is so spectacular and beautiful that as I stop to look at it, the fire is of no interest to me anymore. I look at the world around me, illuminated by the emerald light. Alas, their number is running out. It's about a dozen of them now. The fire grows wilder, I burn out, and am reborn from the ashes, only to burn out again. I am the phoenix, my clothes have already turned into dust, my walk leaves only smoking footprints and charred grass behind. I come to the gates and see him, he lies scratching the ground, trying to escape the camp. The beam that connects us is barely pulsing about to scatter. I come closer and wait, now it's finally gone, leaving nothing but green sparkles on the floor as he freezes. The flame pushes me ahead, but I am not in a hurry to leave. Why me? What have I done to you? What did I do wrong? I ask, I ask the dead body, but it is not about to answer. The pressure is getting unbearable, so I leave. I try crying, but the tears are fading as fast as they leave my eyes. Whispering its goodbye to me, the last beam shattered. I stop in the middle of the alley, leading to the square. I want to lie down, but the, for the firestorm keeps pushing me ahead. We approach the pioneer hornblower statue, then to the paddler girl. Finally, the gigantic monument of Lenin gets my attention. I stretch my hand to it as the fiery gush of light is absorbed by the statue. I follow the path to the woods out of the camp, leaving only dead people and the glowing monument of the chief behind. The only thing I kept are, his, are this diary and the little star deep down in my heart. That's it. Boring. Olya, how did you manage to read in the darkness? There was a diary at Stas. Goes through the pages. It's empty. Smiles. Lisa puts her hand on Steopan's waist. Sasha puts a rolled bedsheet under Nastya's head. Asleep already? Yep. If only your stories were more interesting, you would make a fine writer. But your tales kill us with boredom. Poof. <laughs> Finally, it's time for a real scary story, not one of your knockoffs. Prepare to tremble with fear, for now you will hear about the red eyes. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end it here since that story was rather long. Um, there's not much left of this game to go. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Stay kawaii and have fun out there.